Hi, my name is Joe Kempe with the iPod Repair Clinic in Los Angeles. Welcome to another in a series of repairs for the iPod Classic. Uh, this I would consider the number three repair. Uh, the first one would be battery, second one would be hard drive, but I can almost do both hard drive and headphone jack. This is gonna be for the headphone jack. All right, I'm gonna show you what it takes to open up an iPod Classic. You may have watched my video on replacing a battery. It's very similar, but it's an additional step. So go ahead and take a look at, at what you're gonna need. You're gonna need your two spudgers, you're gonna need two screwdrivers, and you're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver. I recommend you using uh, a high quality uh, tools. Um, you can buy them either from me or you can buy them online. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start opening up the iPod Classic. As you see, this is very similar to the 6. This is the 7th generation. And you can see that it's nice and tight. Uh, from previous openings, I mean, everything always goes back nice and tight. I'm going to show you what it takes to open this. I'm going to put on my glasses so I can see. Uh, the first thing you're going to do again is you're going to expose... Uh, one of the corners, a little bit of a gap. And what you're going to do is work your spudgers all the way around. You're going to knock down the clips, which are holding the face. Don't go near the LCD. Come back down here. Use your screwdriver again. Knock down the clips at the bottom. And you can see that it's starting to open on its own. Just pinch around and keep knocking down, use your screwdrivers to expose a gap and knock down the clips on the other side. Sometimes you have to use two screwdrivers just to create that gap. Okay, and you heard it, you heard it pop. That's a good, that's a good, <clears throat> little bit of strength you have to have to open it up, but you're not using any crazy tools like knives or carpenter's blades or razor blades. You're going, what you're going to do is you're going to pull the heart, the um, battery cable out straight. You do not touch the tension bar on the battery cable. That will break. That battery cable will break. Will, the battery connector will break off the board, and that will be a whole other repair. All right, the first thing you want to do, this is a headphone jack that you get. Uh, you can buy them online. You can buy them from me. But it usually comes without the protective... Uh, pieces on them. There's some foam. There's some plastic uh, protection on the side from the battery. I'm going to go ahead and remove the original and I'm going to replace it with the one that you see here. Most of these that you're going to buy online are going to be refurbished. Uh, there are very few new ones out there, but some of the companies do a really good job in refurbishing, refurbishing them, so you don't have any worry. And I stand behind everything I sell. Okay, the first thing you want to do is to remove the battery. Again, you're going to use your spudger. You're going to come off the right side. You're going to pop it up. And then you're going to make sure that the flex cable that holds that, that is on the other side for the hold switch does not tear. Set your battery aside. What you want to do this time is you're going to pop up the hard drive gently and you're going to use, I use my fingernail because I do not want to use anything uh, too, too uh, abrasive. I just use my fingernail and just kind of pop the, there's a little gate that opens up and pull it straight out. Okay. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to take your screwdrivers and you, you've got you got screws on both sides of the, the headphone. And then what you're going to do, oh, sometimes they're a little bit tricky. All right. You know, release that from the corner. And you see there's some foam, there's some foam on this side. There's foam on the inside. You're going to just pull straight up, releasing the tape. You should have that foam rubber in the back. Uh, a lot of the Chinese um, uh, clones and things like that are the ones that are made in China. They don't put back all the protective devices. This is very important to keep that from shorting out. As you can see, there's exposed electronics right here. 
So that foam will keep it from um, shorting out. Uh, the next thing you want to do is take off the hold switch and just another two screws. Then it pops right out. One second. Okay, one second. Yeah. Okay, once we get that, oh, let's seal that down. These are very small screws, and sometimes they are they get a little temperamental. But here you see this is the original hold switch with all the protective uh, parts on it. I'm going to show you what to do now. You take the one that you get, the refurbished one, and you transfer some of the protective uh, protective uh, pieces here, like the tape. You want to put the tape back on the corner where it came from, and you're going to put the foam rubber from the side here. I don't particularly know the reason for all of these things, but because I'm not an engineer, I do what I'm what was done before. That way, I'm sure that it was there was a pop person. There was a reason for this. So I put that back where it belongs, so it's ready to go back in. A little, sometimes the foam falls off. You just have to reinsert it. Reinsert it right there. Okay. All right. Then you put your screws back. Four screws. One of the four screws is going to be slightly longer, and that's it's just that's the way it is. And you got to make sure you put the right one where they belong. Okay, that's one. Make sure that you can feel a tension when you screw it in so you know that you've got the hole. You found that hole. All right. There's the foam rubber. I've got to re reattach that. There we go. And then the hold switch itself. Make sure that there's no, there's no kink. Make sure it's all nice and flat. You put it in like that, it goes right in. This particular one, okay, I'm gonna have to remove the screw, the long, longer screw that I just mentioned from the old one. Put this back. You can see this, the two screws, it's slightly longer. If I don't know if you can see that, but it's slightly longer. Well, that one is the main one. It goes right in the middle. And then the other, the last screw on the side holds the hold switch. All right. And, oh, this particular one is a, it's slightly broke. All right, we'll have to get another one. You're going to plant your battery back where it belongs. Make sure that you're bringing the protective, protective plastic up. So there you have it, all nice and populated again. Now to put the, to put back the uh, cable, I use my fingernails, you know, I, and, and they're very, that's probably the best tool you're gonna have. But what you wanna do is you're gonna wanna bend it ever so slightly and make sure it plants itself inside of the connector. Once you have it pushed in all the way, go ahead, use your finger and close the door, basically close the tension bar. Okay, what you want to do then is make sure all your rubbers are nice and planted nicely on the hard drive because you don't want this thing to be uh, in the way when you want to close it. And there you have it. What you want to do again with the battery cable, again, I did not open the tension bar I'm using my fingernail and pressing down on the battery tab. And there it is again, it's, it's working. Once you have it working, go ahead, clip it closed. Make sure all the clips have locked and you're good to go. All right, that's how you change a headphone jack on an iPod Classic. Um, you'll try it out. You'll make sure that the whole switch is working and you're good to go. Make sure right and left channels are working. All right. Thank you for watching. And uh, we'll see you on another in a series of repairs at the iPod Repair Clinic. Thank you.